Welcome back and in today's video we're going to go through derivative rules but this time involving tables. So the difference between these questions and other derivative questions are that we are given a table with some outcomes, not the actual expression for y or for f or g. We don't actually know what the function is, but we do know what the possible outcomes will be. So for example, looking at this table, we read it like this. If x is zero or two, then f of x is three or one respectively. And the same goes for h of x. If we substitute zero into h of x, we'll get two, or if we substitute two in, we'll get zero and so on. And then they go on to give us what the derivatives are too. But notice at no point do we actually know what f is or h is. So how do we do this question? Well, I'm gonna move down here and just gonna explain that we're gonna first of all do a chain rule, then a product rule, then a quotient rule. So off we go. The first one is chain rule. That's the one that you see in the thumbnail. So again, they've given us F and H and the derivatives, and they have given us the table of values for zero and two. So what this is asking us to do in the question here is, is evaluate the derivative of F of H of X. Okay, so we've got to understand straight away there that this is a chain rule problem, okay? Because it is a function within another function. Think about when we were doing uh, straightforward chain rule problems, when we said like y is equal to, let's just put an expression here, something rather simple, okay? We have a, a like a function 2x plus one inside a, like another function, which is the parentheses and n to the power of five. And we said the quick way of doing chain rule was to times by the power, everything in the bracket stays the same, take one off that power, but then multiply by the derivative of the bracket, and the derivative of the bracket was two. So that's essentially letting like u equal two x plus one, doing du by dx, and then timesing it by dy by du. That is chain rule, but it's a quick version of chain rule. But let me just uh, point out here what we did. We times by the power, take one off, but the thing in the bracket stayed the same, but then we multiplied by the derivative of the bracket. So that is exactly what you need to do on this problem here. So if I just bring it down here, if we are differentiating f of h of x, the derivative of that will become f prime, but this thing inside here will stay exactly the same, much like it did over here but now we have to times by the derivative of the bracket. So we have to times by the derivative of h of x. So that'll be just h prime of x, okay? Now, those things there on the right, we're gonna start to substitute the value zero into that because that's where it wants us to find. So we have to find the following, f prime h of zero times h prime of zero. So all we're gonna do is go up to the table and we're gonna locate all of these values that we need. Okay, so I'm going to use a different color here. Let's try pink, okay? So we're looking for h of zero. So h of zero, here's h, here's zero, cross-reference, two. So that is f prime of two times by h prime of zero. So let's go and find h prime. h prime of zero is minus three. Okay, that's minus three. Now we're almost there. Now we have to, it's like a little domino effect. We now need to go ahead and find what f prime of two is. So we just go back up to the table. f prime is here, two is here, cross reference, that's three. Okay, so that's three. So three times negative three would equal minus nine. Okay, so the derivative, okay, if we want to write out the full expression, d by dx of f of h of x, at, let's write this down, at x equals zero, okay, is minus nine. Okay, so that's the uh, chain rule one. Let's move on and have a look at the product rule. We're given a table again. They gave us g and h and the derivatives, but we don't actually know what those um, functions are. But they're asking us again here to find the derivative of g of x times h of x. So straight away, I know it's in the title that's product rule, but you'd need to recognize that it's the product of two functions. And they give us the point at minus four. So product rule states then that if we were to differentiate d by, uh, d by dx of g of x, h of x, then the product rule states 
that it's a VDU plus UDV. So if this was U and this was V, then it would be V times the derivative of U plus U times the derivative of V. And it just simply tells us at minus four where we need to uh, plug in. So we're gonna say H of minus four, G prime of minus four, G of minus four, H prime of minus four. And this is the, this, the, we've got past the hardest part now because we need to now just go up to the table and read off the values. So H of minus four, let's go and do this. Here's minus four, so H of minus four is three. G prime of minus four, G prime of minus four is minus one. G of minus four is two and H prime is five. I'll just put brackets around those. Okay, so we're getting a grand total of negative three plus 10. So the answer is seven. Okay, now that somehow that seemed a little bit easier than the chain rule to get your head around. Same goes for quotient rule. So here's the final one. Pause it, take a picture, have a go at it first, and then check back and see if you get the right answer. But it's asking us to simply find the derivative of f if f is given by g of x over h of x. So we're gonna do this in exactly the same way. Don't forget that this is u, this is v. So we have f prime of x is v du, so that's h of x, g prime of x, so that's v du minus u, dv, which is that, all over v squared. Right, so be careful there, we're gonna square that. Now we're gonna substitute zero into all of these expressions. Now I, I, I won't rewrite that with zero in. So what, what I'm gonna be doing now in this next line is plugging zero into this, zero into this, into all of them actually. Okay, so h of zero, if we go up to the table here, we can see that h of zero is two. So I'm just sort of reading across and down. So it's two times g prime, which is minus five, minus g of x, which is three, and h prime, which is minus two, and that's all over h of zero squared, which is going to be four. Okay, so final answer then is minus 10 uh, plus six over four. So that's minus 10, that's minus four over four, which is minus one. And there's our answer to that question. Um, good luck. I'll see you next time. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.